everyone. Good morning. My name is Amanda and I am a registered nurse and the community outreach coordinator here at the Missouri Poison Center. And today we're going to talk all things snakes. And just a short disclaimer, none of this, uh, all of this information is regarding Missouri based snakes, native snakes to our state. Um, there are certainly lots of differences dependent on where you live, as well as um, other types of snakes that um, people may have in the, as pets. Um, but these are the native snake species uh, in Missouri. And then we're going to go through some of the treatment and first aid. So um, just a little primer, snakes are reptiles. This also includes lizards, crocodiles, and turtles. And about half of the snakes uh, lay eggs, and the other half actually uh, give birth to develop young. And as snakes grow, they shed their outer skin, sometimes three to five times per year. So you may have seen a snake skin um, or shed uh, as you've been in the, you know, in the woods or just on the ground, and that is because they shed pretty frequently. And snakes can swim, typically. Um, all snakes eat other animals, and they're classified as carnivores. Um, snakes do play an important role in controlling uh, rodent population, and they also serve as a food source for many wildlife items. Uh, wildlife, such as hawks, owls, skunks, herons, etc. So snakes, um, while some of us have that phobia, are important to our environment and um, important to just kind of learn a little bit more about. So you may be looking at this picture and wondering what it is. It really is a picture. I want to show you there are five, count them, five snakes in this picture. Um, honestly, I've only been able to find four by zooming um, in and out, looking at this picture closely, but I'm told there are five. So I'm going to put it to the next screen and show you where some of them are. You might be able to isolate them a little bit more with the red boxes. Um, see them laid across the logs there, perfectly camouflaged, coiled up, as well as really hidden in plain sight. So if you can find the fifth one, point me in the right direction. So I can mark that on this picture, but I searched and searched and had a hard time just finding the four. So a little bit more about snakes. Um, there are, of course, two varieties in terms of overall categories. We have our non-venomous and our venomous snakes. All venomous snakes in Missouri are members of the pit viper family, and they are characteristic showing there on the right side to have this pit um, uh, between the eye and the nostril on each side of the head, sort of in this general area. And that is for detecting body heat for small animals of prey. And they also have a pair of well-developed fangs, as you see there on the right side, um, on either side of the mouth. The pupils of venomous snakes are elliptical, um, kind of looking like that vertical slit, almost like a cat eye. Um, in comparison, a non-venomous snake has a round pupil similar to URI having the black pupil in our eye. Whoops, let's go back. Um, and all have single row of scales and the underside of the tail. Um, but it is, of course, hard to figure that one out if you're close to a venomous snake. It's not something you typically would flip over and check out, but um, if you do notice that. Missouri has five main um, types of venomous snakes, and we'll talk about each one in the subsequent slides. Um, and then just again, some other differences uh, with the non-venomous, we have round pupils, that double row of scales there versus the single row. Um, a lot of people talk about the shape of the head. Um, and a triangle shaped head uh, doesn't necessarily mean danger. Many uh, venomous snakes have a somewhat triangular shaped head, but uh, several harmless uh, types of snakes, such as water snakes, garter, garter snakes, and other snakes like hognose snakes, often flatten their head, making it appear triangular. So that's less um, of a actual 
uh, way to determine um, more so with the pits, the fangs, and the scales. Um, obviously, if you are unsure, the safest option is just to give it space and not to um, get close enough to tell if you're not experienced in doing so. So let's talk a few uh, minutes about each of our native venomous snakes that are in Missouri. The most common and one you may have seen, which it is found statewide, the entire state of Missouri, is our eastern copperhead. It's a medium-sized snake. It's got a stout body, usually two to three feet in length. Um, most of the time we see gray copper tan or even a pinkish color, pinkish tan. And you see those hourglass bands uh, that are dark brown. Um, some like to you know, compare those to uh, Hershey Kiss, you know, the, the chocolate candy that's in the shape of the triangle uh, uh, sort of pyramid like that. You'll see those um, on the side of the body. Sometimes the younger Eastern copperheads uh, and some adults have a yellow tip to their tail. Um, and this is the most common venomous snake in Missouri. Um, in terms of a snake bite, when we see snake bites in Missouri from venomous snakes, this is by far the one we'll see the most commonly. Um, it is, uh, you know, something that typically if a person's bitten and they get, um, start to have symptoms, it is something that they should seek medical treatment for. Although many of, uh, even our venomous snake bites can be dry bites, which result in just the puncture, but no injection of the venom. So it is something that you should consult with a medical provider, such as your doctor, the emergency department, and the poison center to kind of get some further treatment information. And again, this uh, is the most common and most widespread venomous snake in Missouri. Next, um, we'll talk about the northern cottonmouth. Um, another name for cottonmouth is a water moccasin. So those names are both probably familiar to you. It is a heavier body, dark colored snake with a dark olive brown, almost black appearance, three to four feet in length. Um, its head is wider than its body. So it's got kind of a thicker uh, head uh, and neck area. The name cottonmouth is from the whitish lining inside the mouth. Um, when it's alarmed, it typically opens its mouth wide in this defensive posture, showing that white, uh, cotton white lining to the inside of the mouth. And so you might uh, be familiar with that. Um, and the bite is very dangerous um, and we would encourage seeking medical treatment. Um, there are similar species um, that are semi-aquatic, meaning they do go in the water as well. Um, and all of these uh, types of similar species are protected by law. They're found mostly in the southeastern corner of Missouri. However, um, they're scattered popu populations of the snake throughout the Ozarks, but none occur north of the Missouri River. You'll see that real distinct um, southern uh, distinction for the cottonmouth. All right. If you have a comment or want to ask a question regarding snakes, feel free to put it in the comment section of uh, the Facebook Live. All right. Moving to number three, Prairie Massasagua. This is a medium-sized rattlesnake. Um, if you didn't know, we have three types of venomous rattlesnakes in Missouri. 18 to 30 inches in length. General color is usually lighter with a dark gray, dark brown. And you see all these black, uh, dark brown blotches um, with alternating rows um, of dark spots along the sides. Again, the head is wider than the rest of the body. Usually these rattlesnakes are very mild mannered. Um, they're really hesitant to strike. They're not ones to be aggressive um, unless they're threatened or harassed. Um, usually they also appear motionless, so they kind of freeze uh, in that fight or flight um, motion and um, they avoid detection that way and try to seek shelter without striking. So we do uh, find these, uh, these snakes in uh, somewhat in the north central counties and the northwestern corner of the state, um, as you see there on the map. 
Um, this is the prairie uh, Massasagua. The eastern Massasagua is extremely similar, but we haven't seen those in Missouri for decades, and, and it is considered endangered, um, which was uh, the six of the venomous snakes at one time. All right, that's our first rattlesnake. Our next one is uh, more common is our timber rattlesnake. Again, Missouri's uh, largest venomous snake, three to five feet in length. It's very heavy bodied and has this prominent rattle on the end of the tail. Sometimes you'll uh, also be uh, told that it is called a velvet tail. So it's got this tail, this dark black end to the tail. You can kind of see that near the green of the leaf in the center. Like uh, other snakes, it does use a lot of camouflage to avoid being seen, um, but will bite if it's harassed or bothered. They usually vibrate their tails, causing that sharp buzzing sound when alarmed. Um, although we shouldn't rely on the rattle sound for identification. Um, those tails, you know, if they're injured or cut off, that you they still may, uh, they still are a rattlesnake, as well as um, some surprise snake might not have time to make that rattle sound before they strike. So formally it was found statewide, but has been eliminated from several counties in Missouri, mostly in the prairie regions and southwestern and northeastern corners and lowlands. Um, but you see it kind of prominent in most of the state. All right. Last but not least is our Western Pygmy rattlesnake. It's a small and colorful rattlesnake with a slender tail and a very tiny, small rattle. It is one of the smallest species of rattlesnake in North America, only 15 to 20 inches long, usually brown, gray with dark brown, black blotches. The head has a dis distinct black stripe from the eye to the corner of the mouth. You can kind of see that on the side of the, at the head there. Um, some uh, try to defend themselves. Some do the motionless, um, you know, kind of camouflage. It, the sound of this rattle is much fainter, um, sort of like the sound of a grasshopper. It can be only heard about a yard away. So we shouldn't rely on that because we would be rather, oops, rather close to the snake at that time. Um, it is found mostly in the southern Missouri border with Arkansas and the eastern uh, Missouri Ozarks and St. Francis Mountains. So kind of in the southern uh, uh, area of the state. So again, um, more most common is our copperhead throughout the state. We have three varieties of rattlesnakes and then we have the cottonmouth or water moccasin, of course, um, uh, as well. And so let's talk just a little bit about prevention. Obviously at the poison center, we would rather you not get bitten by a snake. So if we can prevent that from happening, um, these are some good tips. Um, we really encourage if you're hiking or walking, especially in tall grass or weeds to use a walking stick, put that out in front of you, poke around a bit, especially in swamps, marshes and bluff areas. If you are out at night hiking, use a flashlight for added um, coverage and long pants and closed toed shoes always. Um, if thicker, the better, thick leather or rubber, taller ankle boots if you're in areas that are prone to snakes. We really encourage people not to handle snakes, even if you think it's dead. There is still a risk of a bite from a reflex shortly after death. Um, and we never encourage people to hike alone. It's best to have a buddy and a working cell phone if possible in case there is a bite or an emergency, you can seek medical treatment. One of the other things is snakes do like to hide out in logs or uh, in rocky growth areas. So just kind of watch your hand placement if you're reaching or grabbing for things. I will mentioned that several years ago, my family and I went camping and we went to the wood pile to get some wood for the campfire. And lo and behold, there were uh, a couple of copperhead snakes right in that wood pile, just a few feet away. And so if we would have blindly reached into that pile to kind of get gather the wood, we could have uh, risked our fingers and arms. So it's just important to kind of you know, do that poke around a little bit um, before you walk or grab things, especially in uh, areas that are snake prone. 
Um, and then, you know, just learn a little bit more about snakes, learn some of the identifying characteristics as we've talked about today, um, and avoid any snake that you aren't sure of its identity, you know, um, especially with kids, you know, some kids are just very naturally curious with creatures and it's best to, um, you know, kind of talk about a, uh, a, a system of, uh, you know, education to teach them some of the characteristics, the do's and don'ts, and to not touch snakes that we are not familiar with um, and are not identified. Um, all snakes can bite, you know, and, and a non-venomous snake can cause a wound, um, which can have the risk of infection as well. So it's just important to have that healthy, um, you know, view of uh, our creatures out there and to teach our young ones the same thing. Now, heaven forbid you are bitten by a snake. Um, and here are just some do's and don'ts. I like to say that anything you've probably seen in a movie is not realistic of a snake bite or the treatment you should provide. Again, this is for Missouri native snakes. Um, and so surprisingly, we don't um, apply ice or ice water that can actually constrict um, some of the sensation and often cause tissue damage that um, is not wanted. We don't cut around the wound over the fang marks. Don't suck out the venom. If you've seen that in a movie, it's not appropriate treatment. Um, do not try to kill or capture the snake after it's bitten you because we can see further injury. We have had cases where a spouse or a parent goes after to try to identify the snake and also is bitten. Um, and then we have two patients. So, you know, if you can give a few characteristics of the snake, great. If you can snap a picture from a safe distance, perfect. But do not try to capture the snake or further put yourself in harm for that identification. Some do's, you know, if, if it's um, a bite that's on your wrist or on your ankle or somewhere that there's something constricting like a sock or a bracelet or a watch, rings on your hand, anything that might, um, once swelling occurs, cause some issue, you want to start removing anything tight and jewelry in that affected area. You want to immobilize the area, which means just not move it around a lot and keep the bite site slightly elevated, four to six inches above the heart. Um, and that really is for swelling. Um, some people will say, um, you know, that they've heard different things throughout the years about, you know, putting the putting the bite site down, elevation. Um, elevation is a current guidance for snakes in the Missouri and Midwestern area. Um, as much as you can, try to stay calm and at rest. Um, you want to treat it as a wound initially, you know, washing the wound with soap and water to reduce the risk of infection, trying to get it as clean as you can. And then we do encourage you, um, whether you have symptoms or you're just unsure or it's a partial bite, just to um, call and seek medical attention. Um, by all means, if somebody is having a medical emergency, such as shortness of breath or passed out, they have other severe issues, that is a absolute 911 call. Um, however, you know, other things you can do, um, poison control, such as us at 1-800-222-1222. We can help you kind of give you the do's and don'ts, get you on the right path, see if you need treatment um, and, and get you to the right place if necessary. All right, we've talked a lot about snakes this morning. There's certainly much more we could cover, but really the bottom line is um, just to have that healthy appreciation of snakes in our state. Um, there's great resources out there. I would encourage you um, to go on the Missouri Department of Conservation's website. And if you want more information about any of these venomous snakes or any of the plants or wildlife in our state, they have great resources in terms of where it's found, how it looks, some great pictures that you can use, which I also use for my presentation. So the Missouri Department of Conservation is great. Um, they have uh, just good information on identification. 
I also just want to encourage you, as always, to make sure that you have the poison helpline saved in your phone um, to be prepared. You know, none of us want to go into the summer with a snake bite or an injury or an accident in our home or out and about in the state. But if we if it happens, you will have the um, availability and ease of calling the poison helpline, calling the Missouri Poison Center, ready to go if you have it saved in your phone. So take a minute right now, save the phone number 1-800-222-1222. Any of our registered nurses, our pharmacists are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's free, it's fast, and it's confidential. We can get you the help you need and help you to provide the right treatment for something like a snake bite, a medicine mistake, or if a child gets into something that they shouldn't, we're happy to help any time of day. All right, I hope you've learned a little bit more about snakes. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section or give us a call at 1-800-222-1222.